Hi guys, and uh, welcome back to the beach. I've bought out my Olympus OM20 this evening. It's just before sunset. You guys know how much I love this camera. And I've just loaded inside. You saw me do that, a roll of Acros um, 100 film. And I'm pulling it to 50. I don't want to use it at 100 speed. I'm going to pull it to 50 and lower the contrast. And you guys also know that I like doing that as well. Um, very minimalistic stuff, as you know me. I've got a chopping ball. That's going to be my base on these wet sands and uh, just a little tiny grip and a release cable because I'm going to be shooting slower shutter speeds. The one you just saw me do there, I'm a bit, bit sandy and a bit wet from that actually, but um, that was at an eighth of a second at F16 and I also did one at F11 as well and a couple of portrait um, scenes of the, uh, of the cliffs behind me. So I've got plenty to play with. I've got 30 odd shots left in that camera, far too many than what I really want to use. I don't know, I might just maybe bang out half a dozen and, and then uh, save the film for another day, you know, cut the film out of the camera. But I'm gonna mill around here, you can see loads of rocks behind me, um, and out there at the sea, there's a few ships. They're not going anywhere, they're, all, they're, they're not being used at the moment, so they're just, just keeping their engines running, and uh, I don't know what they're doing, to be honest with you. I'm not really into ships, but I wanna take some of those stones as well down to the, um, the sea edge there, and use the chopping board and the grip thing and the camera to try and get some stones in the photograph along with the water. The only trouble is, is those boats are in the background. But I always say it is what it is. I can't change that. I want to do phone them up and ask them to politely move because I'm taking a photograph. They're not going to do that. I don't even know their number, but the time's about half past eight at the moment. So I've got maybe another half hour or so of, of light uh, that I can get these shots in. We've got a can of Coke. I've got another camera in there as well, that's for another time. Um, yeah, I'm a simple guy, look, little tiny bag like this, chopping board, none of this welly palaver. I'll get some photographs in. I'm just looking for a nice big stone that I can take down to the water's edge. I need to get that rock, rock, rock. <laughs> that's how Jonathan was. I need to get that rock a little bit wet. Um, so, just give it some, you know, and then it doesn't look like I've just plonked it there, does it? And then I need to get some of that sand off the top. There you go. Let's get the chopping board down. Before I do that, I'm just gonna do a quick meter up. And I'm gonna kinda of go for a spot meter on the rock and decide to myself um, where I want that rock to be. Just one above middle gray, I'd say. So F11, F16 at one second. So uh, no reciprocity tree failure to worry about with that across. That shit goes on for ages. Let's get this in. There goes my chopping board. Oh, that's a Tide's meant to be going out. <laughs> oh, I lost my rock. I might be in trouble here. Yeah? Should, I should be all right, but... Oh, shit. I need to come back a bit more. Ah. I had to come back a bit more there. Right, chopping board down. On my knees. That looks really nice. Oh, you bastard. Oh, I just got that focused as well. There goes my chopping board. Not again, no, 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 off. Okay, I'm there. Here we go, wait for the next one to come in. And I'll just wait for it to go back. Hopefully that's not gonna to touch me. That's all right, okay, that's okay. It's just gonna go back, I'll get my shot. Now. Ah, oh, the rock started to move, let's do it again. That looked quite nice. Whoop, I better get up, I've got my microphone in my pocket. Okay. Horizon's not straight. Now it is, I think. I'll fix that in the dark room. And that's what the chopping board's doing. It's keeping my camera from sinking. All the legs on this little. I'm just gonna keep shooting this now. Oh shit. I got it. Oh.
chopping ball come back it's really nice light at the moment and this is where if I was shooting digital I'd be going bang 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 you know getting so many different shots in but I didn't have time there to um, to mess about you could see the water was coming in and out the colour on the sand is gorgeous oh, down on my bloody knees again focus in okay one second I'm not sure if that's too much now oh that looked nice Hopefully that's come out all right. Come here. I'm not sure if they're overexposed, uh, pointing over that way, but I don't know. Let's try another one. I can bracket it so I can come down to fourth of a second. Just see what happens. I'm getting wet now. Lovely jubbly. F11 fourth for a second. Wait for that little bit of water to kiss the rock. Yeah, not too bad. 16th. There we go. Whoa, see what that looks like. So I'll just show you what I'm always looking out for when I do these kind of shots. Not that, that doesn't interest me. It's when the water comes up and then as it starts going back, it drags these bubbles with it. And there the bubbles that end up streaking. Look, here we go. Okay, I'm not interested in those ones coming forward. I'm interested in the ones going back. There they go. Not there. There they go. And sometimes if you, if you wait long enough and nail it right, you get these lovely streaks going back towards the sea. Right, um, okay, so I'm going to shut this vlog off now. So I've showed you a bit of the beach, shooting the um, Olympus OM20 with some Akros 100. I'm going to put my earphones back on, and the majority of this video will be me making some prints in the darkroom and seeing what I can come up with. Hopefully uh, the legs are fine. I'm going to get back and um, develop in... I usually develop Akros 100 in, in Rodnoll, but I'm going to go for my X-Toll, um, more than likely... A dilution of one part to one or one part to two I don't know I'll have a look when I get back okay what's that youngsters do <laughs> so I ended up developing the negatives in Xtel one part to one part um, I think it was eight minutes and they come out all right I'm quite happy with them so I've been looking at these first ones that I took the reflections of the cliff so I'm gonna make a print of one of these I'm gonna go for one of these as well probably this one here put the negative in a little blow and in it goes That's the filter I use, that's a two and a half grade filter. And I always start off with a two and a half grade. I never used to, before I, did, before I, had, before I didn't have, um, when I first started doing all the darkroom stuff, I didn't have filters, I never used filters. And you know, I got on fine without them, but eventually over time, um, I wanted to start using filters. So just, if you haven't got filters, it doesn't matter, you can still um, make decent enough prints. You just can't control the contrast that well. So this is my baseboard. This is my made easel that I'm going to be making. This is a, just a bigger, I think a nine and a half by a 12 inch size that I've cut out. Someone said in the comments the other day, get yourself a professional easel, blah, blah, blah. You know, um, they're quite expensive and I've got easels for smaller size prints, but if I can make do with this and still make good prints this way, then the money that I would spend on an expensive easel I can always put into film and other things from my darkroom, so that's my philosophy. This does me fine, let's get on. Okay, so let's just get the focus in, get it fitted in that template that I've got. That's roughly where it is now, my horizon is going down. 
so the sea's kind of falling out the edge of the picture. Don't want that, I want that rise nice, to be nice and straight. Um, so a little bit of jiggery around until I get that straight. I'm just gonna move my template about. So I just use a ruler, I'm gonna have to turn my red light on so I can see. I just use a ruler to make sure that horizon is straight. So that's about four inches from the bottom. About four inches, so that's good, that's good to go. One last thing is just make sure I've got my sharpness. Use my grain focus finder. Christ, it's such fine grain, it's hard to see this one. I think that's about right. I've got another focus finder here that lets me see the image, that's sharp, that's good. Sharp as I can get it. Put my two and a half grade filter in. Turn the red light off so I can see. Bring the aperture down to f8. Gives me more. The more um, aperture I've got, f8 is darker the image, so it gives me more to, more time to play around with the enlarger light on um, for any dodging and burning, which I anticipate on doing. So these are the trays, 16, uh, 20 by 16 trays. I've got my developer going in there. This is a fresh multi-grade developer, Ilford multi-grade. And my fixer sits up here. It's a bit of a space saver for me. Just got to be careful not to splash any fixer into the developer. That'd be disastrous. And the stop buff is in there. And that one is for washing. Now, unfortunately, at the moment, you guys can't see the image on the on the board because I've got the red light on um, and it's quite dark. I can see it. So I'm just gonna do a couple of test strips first. This is the same paper as I'm gonna be using in a moment. Depends where I wanna place my test strip. So I'm going to use the cliff because the sea and the sky are pretty much the same um, tones. So I'm going to use the cliff and place my test strip there. Like so. And then see what we get from that. And just do two second increments. One, two, four, six, Eight, ten. So we've done a test strip of ten seconds. Let's develop that and see what we've got. So here's my test strip with the grey two and a half filter. So I've got two, four, six, eight, ten. So ten seconds is, is looks a bit too light, but I'm going to do a, a complete test anyway on ten seconds. Just see how it looks. Stick that over there. Give it a ten second burst see what we're doing. I want to try and make the image um, not too contrasty but I want it to have a bit of punch to it you know I don't want it to be flat. Let's see what that looks like. So there it is at 10 seconds. It's okay it just looks a bit flat. The, the sea is grey it just looks a bit muddy and flat. Um, so I need to work on that. I need to really build the blacks up a bit more. So I'm gonna to have to start looking at the contrast zero filter and a contrast five and do some split grading. Now the contrast zero filter is gonna build up my whites without touching the blacks too much. And then once I'm happy with the whites, I can then use a contrast five filter which will build up the blacks and it won't touch the whites. So uh, let's put that to test, see what happens. So now I'm doing away with the contrast two and a half filter. I'm gonna come into the zero filter there it is in there. I'll keep the five out because I'm going to be using that as well. So let's do a test with just the zero filter and see what happens. So this is my test strip with just the contrast zero filter and I've got two, nothing there, four, six, eight, ten. Four is too, too light um, in the whites but six is starting to get there so I'm now going to do another test with contrast zero at six seconds, and then I'll put the contrast five um, filter in, and then do tests on top of that, just to see 
how the contrast five bit filter is going to build up those blacks for me and leave the whites popping. So another piece of paper in. Well, fortunately guys with uh, dark cream you do go through quite a bit of paper with um, doing tests. Sometimes you get lucky and you've got negatives that just print straight away but I knew this one was going to be a bit on the tricky side so okay contrast zero filters in six seconds off it goes and now I can put my contrast five filter in and just to see how that's going to build on the blacks for me and just a normal test print again but I'm just testing five now on top of that six seconds of contrast zero so two second increments again two four six eight I'm just going to go 12 with this one 12 okay let's see how that's worked <laughs> So uh, this is my contrast five test strip with underneath that was uh, six seconds of contrast zero. And so six seconds of contrast zero, six seconds of contrast five split grading has given me pretty much the same as six seconds at two and a half grade filter, which is what I didn't want. Um, so I'm now gonna see if I can go less time on a contrast zero, um, but I'm now falling into the territory of losing the sky. I want to put a little tiny bit of tone in the sky. I don't want the, the sky to be the same uh, whiteness as the paper. So uh, I'm going to have to play around a little bit and I'll come back and let you know what I've done. But I think I'm going to go less time on the contrast zero and more time on the contrast five. Well, that was a result. That was uh, straight off. I just had a stab at 10 seconds contrast five, three second contrast zero. And I started to get the blacks where I wanted it and the whites where I wanted it on the cliffs here. Just started to pop a little bit more, less muddy than they were before. Um, I've still got a little bit of problems in the sky. Um, where I just need to try and get that little bit toned if I can. I'm happy with the sea, that's okay. This area I want a little bit blacker. And I think I'm happy with the cliff as it is. So... I'm going to have to use my burn tool and burn a bit more contrast at zero in just around this sky area just to try and take the inertia off that paper. I could try pre-flashing but I don't want to go down that road um, and then I just want to use the contrast 5 filter to burn this part of the uh, shadow, not here, just this bit of the cliff in. So uh, let's have a go. I'm going to have to put a big piece of paper in, give it a go and see how we get on. Okay, that's it. We burn tool, I need that. So, three seconds contrast zero. Contrast zero is in three seconds overall. Off it goes. And now I'm just going to burn the sky area in. Um, this will be a trick. I've got to turn the red light off, guys, for this. Otherwise, I won't see what I'm doing on the baseball. I'm just going to burn the sky in. Um, maybe five seconds so this will be I might actually I might just use my hand on this in fact I might use another dodge tool I'm going to use this dodge tool here let's see how we get on three I'm just literally touching the cliff at the top but it might help that'll do now I need to put the contrast 5 filter in and that's going to start popping those blacks for me. Oh, you said 10 seconds on that. Turn that light back on. 10 seconds, contrast 5. You can't see nothing. I can hardly see anything because the red light's on, but I'm just trusting my timer. And I'm just going to burn a little tiny bit of the cliffs. Turn that off again. Burn just a little tiny bit of the cliff black and at the bottom of the cliff as well. So just around those. And doing this, it shouldn't touch the whites too much as long as they're not too muddy. And just that line 
in the middle of the print just try and get that a little bit blacker if I can and now just the bottom part of the reflection okay let's see how that looks So I'm really happy with the way that came out. Uh, the sky, I managed to dodge that in, just give it a bit more def um, a bit definition, really, I suppose, compared to the edge of the paper. Uh, it's just got a bit lighter down here, which it naturally does. The sky is always darker at the top. And we've got the water going as well. I really like that one. Let's work on another one. So that was uh, quite a good darkroom session for me. I enjoy darkroom sessions like that, you know, where you play around with filters, a bit dodging and burning, and uh, get the results that you like. I really enjoy making this print here, and I like it as well. This one's going to go on my website, guys. If anyone wants to purchase this and help the channel and support me in the darkroom, this is going on my website. And this particular print, I did uh, exactly the same for three seconds and 10 seconds. So three seconds contrast zero, 10 seconds contrast five. And then all I did, um, I actually on the contrast zero, I just uh, dodged the rock very slightly so that didn't get that only got about a second of contrast zero and then the five hit the rest of it I use contrast five just burned in a bit here make it darker and also the top part of the sea here you can see you can see you can see you know what I'm talking about so that was quite an enjoyable print to make as well anyway guys hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching if you did watch till the end a little bit long-winded I had fun and games at the beach uh, getting wet and all that stuff but people asked me uh, recently if I could do longer darkroom sessions people that are getting into darkroom printing so if this helps anyone fantastic you know this is the way I do it it's not the right way it's not the wrong way it just is so uh, hope you enjoyed it I'll catch you next time a bit more.